On June 25, 1991, Slovenia and Croatia declared independence from Yugoslavia, which sparked a series of civil wars that took an estimated 140,000 lives. When it was all said and done, Yugoslavia succumbed to the internal conflict, which gave way to six nations that exist today. Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, North Macedonia, Montenegro, Slovenia, and Croatia. But what if there was never a civil war? Basketball has become an international sport, and as the NBA's global outreach has increased, so has the number of star players from countries outside of the United States. The last five MVPs were awarded to international players, and you can make a legitimate argument that the top four players in the league were born overseas. So what if Yugoslavia was still a country? How would their roster look, and how would they fare against the United States? Starting at point guard for Yugoslavia is none other than Dallas Mavericks star Luka Doncic. Doncic's feel for the game has allowed him to emerge as the NBA's youngest superstar. His creation, playmaking, understanding of pace, and mismatch hunting have made him one of the most unguardable players in the league. Starting at shooting guard is former EuroLeague legend and current Oklahoma City guard Vasily Misic. Misic's size, secondary playmaking, and shooting ability fit perfectly next to Luka Doncic. Misic led Anadolu Efes to back-to-back -back EuroLeague championships in 2021 and 2022, capturing Final Four MVP in both seasons. Last season in the Turkish Super League, he averaged 15 points and 5 assists on 53-46-93 shooting splits. Also, he was the second highest scorer on Team Serbia at the 2022 Eurobasket with 14.8 points per game and led the team in assists with 7.5 per game. Starting at small forward is Atlanta Hawks guard Bogdan Bogdanovic. Over the past six seasons, Bogdan has established himself as a solid rotational piece, thriving as a secondary creator and volume shooter. Last season, he shot 41% from three on seven attempts per game and helped catapult Atlanta from a play-in to a playoff team. Starting at power forward is Detroit Pistons forward Bojan Bogdanovic. Bojan has been a solid NBA player since he first came into the league. He is known for his exceptional floor spacing ability and high basketball IQ. Last season, he averaged a career high in points with 21.6 per game while shooting 41% from three on six attempts per game. Starting at center is two-time NBA MVP Nikola Jokic. Denver's championship run this past season completely flipped the national media's perception of Jokic's game from being a fringe top five player you couldn't build a championship defense around to the undisputed best player in the world. His combination of post-scoring and playmaking make him the best offensive engine in basketball as he is equipped and willing to always make the right play. Backing up Doncic at point is veteran guard Goran Dragic. Dragic is a crafty playmaker who brings experience to this Yugoslavian roster. He has played 15 seasons in the NBA and won 2017 Eurobasket MVP on route to Slovenia's first title. In his best statistical season, he averaged 20 points, 6 assists, and 4 rebounds on 48, 41, 79 shooting splits. Backing up Misic at the 2 is Denver Nuggets forward Vlako Konchar. Konchar was a reliable rotational piece during the 2023 NBA season, shooting 37% from 3 and providing good individual and team defense. He is one of those players who plays his role and works hard on both sides of the ball. He projects as the only 3 and D wing on this roster and has chemistry with both Luka Doncic and Nikola Jokic. Backing up Bogdan at the 3 is Oklahoma City forward Alexei Pokashevsky. Poku is a 7-footer who can handle and shoot the ball. Last season, he averaged 8 points per game on 37% 3-point shooting. His size and length gives him the potential to be a very effective team defender. Backing up Boyan at the 4 is 2-time NBA All-Star Nikola Vucevic. Vucevic is a 3-level scoring threat at the center position. He has an excellent mental low post game and can stretch the defense with his 3-ball. Last season, he averaged 18 points, 11 rebounds, and 3 assists on 52% shooting from the field and 35% shooting from 3. Backing up Jokic at the 5 is Los Angeles Clippers center Ivica Zubak. Zubak has become a very effective NBA role player. He is a big body who sets hard screens, grabs boards, catches lobs, and protects the rim. He can also score effectively on the low block. Last season, he averaged 11 points and 10 rebounds on 63% shooting. 
Coming in as the 11th man is Portland Trailblazers center Yusuf Nurkic. Nurkic is an intense player who comes from a system heavy in pick and roll, making him a seamless fit next to Doncic. Last season, he averaged 13 points and 8 rebounds per game on 52% shooting from the field and 36% shooting from three. The final roster spot on Team Yugoslavia belongs to Real Madrid's 6'9 guard, John and Musa. Musa was drafted 29th overall by the Brooklyn Nets back in 2018. In two years with the Nets, he averaged a mere 4 points per game on 38% shooting. He was eventually traded to the Pistons, who immediately waived him. Soon after, he returned to Europe, where he began to blossom into one of the EuroLeague's best scorers. Last season, he averaged 16 points, 3 rebounds, and 3 assists on 50% shooting from the field and 39% shooting from 3. Luka Doncic could very well be the best pick-and-roll ball handler in the world. Last season, Doncic ranked first in points per possession out of the pick-and-roll among players who played at least 60 games. He did this with big men who have little to no ability in the short roll. Because of this, teams would often blitz Doncic and force the ball out of his hands. But you can't do that when the guy in the short roll is the best passing big man of all time. A Doncic-Jokic two-man game would break basketball as they could seemingly get a good shot every possession. Fight over and drop, and you have Doncic working 5-on-4 with Jokic rolling to the rim. If Jokic pops, you have the best post-scoring guard in the world working with his defender on his hip and Jokic open for three. Hedge and Doncic will find Jokic every time. Go under, Doncic will have a wide open three every time. Blitz and you have Jokic downhill working three on two. Switch and you have a mismatch favoring the most efficient post player in the world. Help a little bit too much and either Doncic or Jokic will make the right play and the ball will end up in the hands of an elite three-point shooter. According to Second Spectrum, the most efficient play in the NBA over the past 10 years is a Nikola Jokic post-up. There is nobody in the world who can hold Jokic one-on-one, -on -one, so in game planning against Jokic, coaches are faced with the impossible question of whether or not to double-team. If you play single coverage, Jokic will score at will. If you double-team, Jokic will find an open shooter or cutter nearly every possession. If teams think that the answer to that question is to play zone, they are sadly mistaken. Against Yugoslavia, you are up against the best post scorer and passer in the world working out of the high post, with Luka Doncic finding weak spots in the defense that he can exploit, and three elite three-point shooters surrounding them. Not to mention, you have Vucevic, Zubak, and Nurkic off the bench who can play alongside Jokic and occupy space along the baseline, making it trickier to run an effective zone. Against Man, Doncic could also mismatch Hunt by having shooters screen for him and pop. The threat of the three-pointer on the pop should be enough of a threat to force a switch and then Doncic could walk the smaller defender into the paint and operate from there. While well, offensively Yugoslavia would project as one of if not the greatest team of all time, they would struggle with their main defense. Vlako Konchar is the only good NBA level point of attack defender on the roster and Jokic isn't much of a rim protector. So Yugoslavia would have to rely on zone defense. In FIBA, there is no defensive three-second violation, so Jokic could sit in the paint, which would give him more time to anticipate drives and cuts to the rim. The FIBA court is also smaller than the NBA's, so with the size and length that this team possesses, they could likely run an effective zone defense. But would this be enough to beat the United States? If the United States fielded the same roster they're sending to the upcoming World Cup, they would surely lose. All things considered, up and down the roster, there just isn't enough offensive firepower to outscore Yugoslavia or enough defensive prowess to slow down Doncic and Jokic. If the United States fielded the same roster they did at the Tokyo Olympics, it would be closer, but I still put my money on Yugoslavia. Hear me out. Yes, the US would have Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Jason Tatum, but there is only one basketball. It's pretty clear that it would be the Doncic, Jokic show on the Yugoslavian front, and if your name isn't Luka or Nikola, your job would be to space the floor and work your ass off on defense. The same can't be said about the US. There are too many variables. You could look up and down both rosters and see that there is a clear talent disparity favoring the US and disagree, but you can't argue with the fact that this is the same American team that lost to a Nigerian team led by Gabe Vincent, an Australian team led by Patty Mills, and a French team led by Rudy Gobert. Let's say that the United States were able to send all of their best talent and put together this roster. Despite this additional firepower, Yugoslavia would still be able to score at will. This is due to the fact that the actions they run are so simple in principle but so hard to stop no matter who is defending them. Nobody can stop Jokic, and if they continually feed him the ball, the US will be forced to come up with an answer to the impossible question. Also, Doncic could still pick on Curry, Booker, and Lillard in the post. On the flip side, the additions of LeBron James and Stephen Curry would make a huge difference for the United States. LeBron would provide stability through his playmaking and leadership that the 2020 team lacked, and Stephen Curry would make this team even more of a nightmare than they already were to defend. 
All things considered, I think that the United States' offensive arsenal outmatches the opportunities created through Doncic and Jokic, and although I think it's possible that Yugoslavia could squeak out a win, I'm taking the United States. So there you have it. A Yugoslavia national basketball team would likely beat the teams that the U.S. puts onto the world stage, but a fully loaded American team would be too much for Yugoslavia to handle. If you like international and basketball philosophy type content, subscribe for more.